Hey everyone, what's up? This is Mark from Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix Framework by building things. Today I am working on uh, that book that I've been talking about since, uh, I guess, uh, about two weeks ago. I've already finished the first section of it, so the next one is a board game, and I'm going to cover that today. So let me fire up Firefox and go to alchemist.camp and I'll show you what that book I'm talking about is. Let's uh, let's see, get this to the main mode. So <clears throat> I have so far set up the, uh, the first game in it. So that's like uh, uh, the guessing game, which is basically the simplest possible game that we could could possibly make. It's similar, but not identical to the one that I wrote for lesson one in Alchemist Camp. So it's basically a game where you guess numbers between one and a hundred and the, or actually you, you think of a number and then the computer guesses your number and you either say bigger, smaller, or yes, when it's finally got it. Today I'm working on board games and uh, the goal of this one so the first lesson I, or the first section of the book I'd already taught you know what a module is what a um, like what a function is some some just low level basics and now I'm gonna go over uh, lists tuples structs actually tuples yeah probably get to tuples maybe not though uh, lists, structs, pattern matching. I've already done some pattern matching, but we'll do some more. And uh, the the real focus, like the main focus, is going to be maps and structs. So um, since this is, keep in mind, like this is chapter two of a, a book for complete beginners, this is going to be uh, not using Phoenix. It's just going to be a plain mix project. And excuse me, I think a mosquito trying to get me here um it's it's just going to be a board game simplest board game that i can possibly do which is going to be tic-tac-toe and it's not going to involve the same message passing style that i used in lesson four of alchemist camp it's just going to be really straightforward one hey there walking wounded um yeah so i'm just gonna get to it now one thing i picked up during black friday shopping was some uh uh, some music that I can play during the stream. So I'm going to try that out. And if it's too loud, oh, that is kind of loud, actually. If it's uh, just overwhelming in some way, let me know, and I'll uh, I'll uh, either make it quieter or shut it off or whatever. I just thought it'd be fun to throw something new in here. Okay, so this is... Probably too small. Let's see. Probably, let me, uh, yeah, 37 lines. So if you can't see this, just let me know and I'll, uh, you know, I'll make it smaller or I'll make it uh, larger, I should say. So I'm just gonna show the code. Yeah. So main chatting right back. You should see, ah, why did that, oh, it's not playing them all? Come on, it should just play all of them. What's going on here? Um, okay, well, whatever. So, do you see my code? There's nobody watching, okay. I see the code though, so. I'll widen it to here. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, okay, so this is a brand new project here. Um, you know what, let me let me actually just wipe out everything, everything in this, in this directory here. So I'll uh, rm-rf to wipe out the entire directory. So this is gonna be tic-tac-toe, which is about as simple as it gets. So 
This is gone. This is gone. Yeah, there's nothing there. So we'll use mix, which is the, uh, that's the kind of, it's kind of like Elixir's version of NPM. Uh, so I can mix new, and then I'm going to call the project Tic Tac. It's going to be a Tic Tac Toe game. And that will generate a whole bunch of stuff automatically. And of course, Elixir LS crashed because a whole bunch of stuff got generated and didn't know what to do with it. So by default, we've got this module Tic Tac that just has a hello world function and that's it. What I'm gonna do now is <clears throat> going to make some structs that handle the, uh, the board and the pieces and the game itself. For that, let's just take a quick look at everything in our new project. So we've got a mix file that's very much like a, a gem file in Ruby or like a, a package that JSON is a node. And we have a test that's just testing the hello and the hello world function. And yeah, that's that's really all we've got. Um, Get ignore or read me. Readme is also basically empty. So it's all empty everything, and that's a good spot to start. So first thing thinking for this this uh, tic-tac-toe game is we need a way to uh, we need a way to keep track of the board. We need a way to keep track of the game state. And the board is actually going to be part of the game state. And then finally, the board is kind of a even though it's just tic-tac-toe, uh, we could do like a whole board as uh, um, uh, it's just like its own struct and have no more granular uh, way to look at the individual squares, but I'm going to do squares separate from the board. So um, let's see here. I think the easiest way to do this is we'll start from... A square. So we'll make a new file here, and that's going to be called square.ex, and create a module here. And this is going to be tic tac dot square. And oops, there we go. And uh, first thing we'll do is alias itself. The reason for that is actually, you know what? I'll just do that in a little bit, and you'll see why. So. Um, Let's see here. This is going to be a struct. So def struct, I guess this code doesn't have that, but I made my own. Um, so this is uh, a square is going to have uh, row information and it's going to have column information. And a square can either have an X in it or an O in it or nothing. I'll call that the value of the square. And what else do we have? Um, I'm going to actually, I'm going to keep track of row and column and position, all three. And the reason for that is sometimes it's easier when you've got like a two dimensional board. Sometimes it's easier to deal with a position like one through nine for tic tac toe. And sometimes it's easier to just know that. Um, say, for example, the, the lower left one would be position number seven, but we really, it's, it's, um, at least for how a player is going to be thinking about it, they want to think like, okay, this is the third row and it's the first column. So it's in the lower left. So we'll, we'll just include both of those and let's see. We're going to enforce keys, which, which basically says it's a required, it's a required field. And the only thing we're going to enforce here is there must be a position. Yeah, the row and the column will create separately. Actually, do I even want to call it row and column? Actually, let's just call it X and Y. It's shorter. We're going to be typing that a lot. So, um, we've got our struct and then let's let's make a, a new for it. So we'll make a function called new 
And this will take, uh, we'll make it so you can create a new tic tac square by uh, just passing it a position or by passing it an X and a Y. We'll have both of those possible. So we'll start with, um, let's see, we'll start with just taking a position. And let me think here. We're going to want, uh, Okay, let's just start by returning a square. So return a square and yeah, we'll take a position and we'll re return the square that has that position. So we should be able to, what's wrong here? So the square struct is undefined. So we have to call this tic-tac dot square because uh, we have an alias this module into itself which is uh, a little bit a little bit counterintuitive but what we can do if we don't want to type out tic tac dot square is we can just type uh, alias tic tac dot square or the easier way to do this is we'll just alias under under module under under which is always uh, the name of whichever module you're currently in. So if we change the name of the module, we'll still have all the same info. So now let's do IEX-S mix. Let's see, mix, and that's it. Just because we don't have Phoenix. So that'll start up everything in IEX. And we should be able to say, uh, let's see. Let's actually, let's alias that again. So tic-tac-square, just so we don't have to type out the whole thing. So we should be able to say square dot new and okay. Well, we don't have a, a new with no value. So let's pass it position one and we have tic tac dot square position is one. Everything else is nil. Now, obviously we, we should figure out the X and the Y. Um, let's add another module attribute here. We'll call this uh, board size. Board size is going to be three. So this just means a three by three board. And now we can get the X and the Y from the position. So let's see if we have, let's say we have position seven, which I mentioned should be the lower left corner. So if we had position seven, then we can do uh, seven divided by three. So div seven and three to get two. So that would be the, so div will is basically division, except you throw away the remainder. So dividing by three is just going to say which, uh, which row we're in because uh, zero, one or two divided by three will be zero if you throw away the remainder. And if it's from three to five, then we'll get one plus some remainder. And if it's from, uh, it's from six to eight, then we'll get two. So we'll just say Y is going to be div position and three or board size. And then X is actually gonna be that remainder because uh, say in this case again, seven divided by three well, seven goes into, or three goes into seven twice, and we have one left over. Well, that one left over is the column we're in. I think this will make sense once I, once I just print out some, some examples. So remainder of position and board size. So we'll save that, recompile. Whoa, getting some serious lag here. Recompile. Okay, and now square new position one it says X is one, Y is zero. Let's look at eight. That should be the bottom right. Oh, this is a little bit unintuitive because I'm, I'm not used to thinking of, of like a tic-tac-toe board going from zero to eight. I'd rather think of it going from one to nine. And I'd rather think of 
um, the x like the uh, the row and the column going from one to three instead of from zero to two. So let's see what we can do about that. Um, I think the uh, let's make a helper function. So we'll make a function for x and one for y. So this will be a one liner. We'll just call this x. So x will take in some position. And to get the x from the position, we'll do remainder of position and board size, just as we have up here. And we'll just replace that with x of position. And on y, we'll make similar functions. So this will be y of the position. And y will be div. OK. So now that we have those two helper functions, nothing should change. Everything should still look the same. But it's easier to uh, to update how these work now because we can we can just tweak it so we want the maximum value to be from uh, the maximum value should be nine so so we want to add one let's see we want to subtract we'll subtract one we want the position to go from one to nine instead of from zero to eight so we'll subtract one from it we're assuming that the user has put in say nine, instead of having put in eight. And then we will add one over here. So now if we get a, say if we get a position of one, then one minus one is zero. So the, the remainder of zero divided by anything or um, the, or zero divided by anything, throwing away the remainder, either case, or we're just gonna get zero, but zero plus one is one. So if we put in position one, we should get x1, y1. And if we put in eight, well, then we should get, um, then we should get eight minus one divided by three is gonna be two with the remainder of one. And then we're adding one to each of those. So that should be three, two. We should be row three, column two. And we're not because I haven't recompiled or I haven't saved. So I save then recompile. Okay, so we see x2, y3. And if we say nine, we get three, three. We say five, we should get two, two, should be in the middle. Yeah, okay. And let's say position number six. So that should be way at the right side in the middle. And it is. So get that little helper. Um, now, some other things that are going to be convenient would be, it, it'd be nice if we could just take this whole square and, and pass it into that function. So I'm going to say my square equals this, this right here. Um, how do I get the X value out of my square? So uh, tick tat, if I say square dot X of six, that works. That gets the X value out of it. But what if I want to get the X value out of my square? It'd be nice if we just had a single function that would, uh, they would just work, whether if you put in the position or if you put in the whole square. So in order to make that work, I'll make a second function head. So this will be, um, 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 this will be still called X. And the argument is going to take a square. We're matching on a square. So if it is a square, this will, uh, um, this will match and won't go to the other function definition. And that should really be all we have to do. 
there's grit, although it won't work here because we haven't defined it yet. So uh, let's take it from the position. So position X, so uh, position, position, and we'll just do X of the position. And I guess we didn't need that to be a two liner. So same deal here. So if we pass in a square, it'll get the position and then it will calculate the X or the Y as um, following this exact same formula we have down here. So I'll recompile. And now, uh, clause of same number and arity should be grouped together. Oh, yes, they should. So now, recompile, no warnings, and we can use either my square or we could just pass it in the position itself and both work. So now that we've got that done, um, what else do we need from the square module? We could have some checks. It'd be nice to have like a, um, a check to say like, hey, did we pass in a value, a valid uh, position or not? So I think the way to do that is we'll enforce that on the new. So uh, we need the maximum position. So we'll just call that uh, max EOS equals word size times word size. So we only need to update this one number at the top if we change the word size. Um, on this new, we'll say when position is greater than zero and position is less than or equal to uh, max position. Max position. So what this will do is this will make it so uh, if it's between zero or if it's if it, yeah if it's between one and nine, then this will match. If it's not, then there will be no matching new definition and we'll just get an error. Let's uh, recompile and then give that a try. Uh, what did I miss here? Uh, probably meant max position expression. One position is greater than zero and less than, oh, that shouldn't have an equal sign. It should just be that. Okay. Okay, so we'll make a new square. That's good. Six is good. Nine is good. Ten, we get an error, and it highlights what was wrong. And if we have new square zero, same deal. Okay, so I think we're good on the squares for now. Next thing is to make the board. And the board is going to... Do pretty much the same kind of thing. So we'll have a, we'll have the board will have its own struct just like the square did. So uh, tic tac dot board, and just like with uh, with the last module, we want to be able to ref uh, refer to the board struct inside of itself. So we'll just do the double under module, uh, alias that. And we probably also want to alias the squares. So tic tac dot square. And you know what? This is probably where we should have the, um, the max size set. So we'll make, uh, we'll make that a module doc. The, we'll make that a module attribute here. So the board size is going to be three. And then we'll make a helper function so that the other modules can get the board size from board. And so that'll be board size, no arguments, and it'll just return its own board size. So we only have to change this one number. Um, that's something we, we definitely want to make it, make sure is easy. So now the board size is just going to be, actually let's alias the board. Tick tack dot board 
word size is going to be word dot word size. And all should keep working as before. Looks good. And let's do the same thing for the max position because it's it's really the uh, uh, the same kind of deal. So max position is word size times word size and we'll make a one liner for max position no arguments and we'll just return its own module attribute that way square can get that at from word size as well so board or from the board module as well okay so nothing has changed in the square, but we've uh, we've now made the board the source of truth for that. And I said the board is going to be a struct, so we'll define a struct. Boards will have let's see, boards will have squares. And do they have anything else? Not that I'm thinking of right now. So I think we'll just We'll just make it squares and let's give it a default of that being an empty list. Okay, so we have uh, we have squares and then to make a new board, uh, what we want to do is is basically make every possible kind of square. So uh, well, the squares can be you know or not every possible kind. We don't don't need to fill them. We want them all to be empty, but we want um, basically a square at each position, and we want that in order. So uh, looking at IEX, you can see square new of one, square new of nine. To get everything in between, we can do something like enum dot each, and or maybe enum dot map makes more sense. And We'll go from one to nine, and then in each of these, we'll do uh, square dot new, and just take the number directly. So that gets us all the squares, and I think that's that's really exactly what we want. So we'll do uh, new and. New board doesn't take anything. It uh, it will return enum dot map square uh, one to max position. So that'll be over the range from one to nine in our case. And square dot new yeah okay so we'll, we'll recompile that and board dot new <clears throat> board dot new because we have an alias the board so tic tac the board okay and these all have no value but um, that yeah then we'll, we'll update them when we actually start playing so that seems good so far um, one other thing I think would be nice for the board is if it uh, if it handled printing so uh, we we don't have any kind of UI at all. Let's let's have the board have a like a print and maybe a, a print line. So this will take in a board and we really need the squares out of the board. So squares. And let's think about this for a second. So we have 
a list of, well, we have actually this list exactly, these nine squares. And what we want to do with these squares is we want to loop through them. Well, so first we'll get positions one, two, and three. So that's basically, they're all the top row and going from left to right. So we want to print those out as one line. And then we want to print these out as another line. And then we want to print these out as another line. So the way that we'll do that is with enum.chunk every, I believe. So enum dot, actually let's, let's save those, those uh, squares. So uh, squares, actually we'll just make a board. We'll just call it um, b1 equals board dot new and b1 dot squares. Oh, what's wrong here? B1. Oh, shoot. Actually, that's not the logic we want. This is returning the squares, but it should be returning a board that has these squares set as its value for squares. So now, yeah, now we have a board with a, those squares. So b1.squares is here. And let's pass that into enum.chunk every three. Perfect. So now we have an array of three arrays. And each of those three arrays has one row of the board. So we'll take, uh, we will take all of those. So uh, I'll start with the squares. Enum.chunk every. And so each of those will be a line. So we need to print line like that. And then we need to define print line. So print line takes some squares. And what do we do with the squares? Let's let's take a look at the squares again. So we don't care about the position. They're in order. We're just using the order. So we care about the value and that's it. So what we want to do is uh, an enum dot join on uh, on these. So we'll we'll join them together. Let's let's uh, join them with vertical pipes. So we get something that looks kind of like uh, we want something that looks like this. We want to have you know some maybe an X and then O and then maybe nothing. like so. And then the next line, we want to have, you know, whatever its contents are. So for each square, we want to, uh, or for each, for each line, we want to join the squares on a pipe and some space on each side of the pipe. So enum.join squares and that let's let's just get one one line here we'll call that squares okay enum dot join squares and oh enum so that's right 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 so we actually need one more step. So our squares are maps. They're not they're not values. So we'll enum dot map. 
uh, whatever the square has, and we'll just return the square dot value. Okay, so now we have nil, nil, nil. And then we should be able to put that into the enum.join squares. So uh, let's uh, call that values and enum.join the values. And we've got, it's kind of hard to see, it's a little gray, but we've got this. So, oh, yeah, uh, Mark AFD, you can ask me a question. Uh, okay, there we go. Got to recompile. Position one, value nil, x one, y one. Because we're trying to do the value on. One of them, okay. So we just chunk every. Okay, so that chunks every. Oh, right, so what we have now is a list of lists. So for each list, we need to do this. So we'll do enum dot each. Oh, it stopped again. Okay, we'll do that. Don't think it'll stop now. Um, all right, so we have... Chunk every, then we get these three, and then with each of those, we want to print the line. So that will just be print line, like so. I think that'll, I think that'll just do it. Okay. Num to each print line. And this is not actually printing, it's just joining them. So, io.puts. There we go. So we were printing out an empty board of nothing because the board is completely empty. Oh, do we, maybe I should add in some, yeah, let's add in some horizontal dashes. Just yeah, it would be a lot, a lot more readable. So we'll join it with that. Io dot puts. So we want to have horizontal lines between the first and second, between the second and the third, but we don't want them before all of them or after all of them. So, every print line. So 
So one way we could do it is we'll just print the horizontal dashes before we print uh, the line itself. And we'll only do that if we'll only do that if the row or the Y value is greater than one. So if the first square dot y is greater than one one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that's a bit too many, but it's it's a bit it's a right right general idea. Uh, why do we get so many? So we had the first thing joined by so we have an empty I think it's because it's nil. Let me change those to X's. Now the default, the default uh, value is going to be an X, like the piece X. Yeah. I want a little padding on each side of those too. Because really, really what I want to do is I want to save whatever this is and then just add one space on each side of it. Just so it's all it's all padded out a little bit better. So, oh, there's there's a super easy way to do that. It's uh, it's a little bit, a little bit silly, but we can just io dot puts a space and then io dot puts another space. Yeah, now it's spaced out a bit. And what if there were no value? Then what do we have? Then we have <clears throat> Kind of a mishap and board again. So I, I think, just to make this like a better print, I think uh, we've got to do something here. So if so, s dot val s goes to s dot value. But if it's nil, we want a space. Yeah, that's, well, that's weird. It gave us way more spaces. How did that happen? Oh, maybe. Maybe it's the same.
No, it's not. The mill board has extra. Oh, I bet it's because Iota puts includes a new line. Yeah, so I'm going new line, new line. Print is undefined. What I really want here would be like Chomp from Pearl. Right, that's right. Yeah, all right. That looks that looks very reasonable. Um, next question is, do I really want to do the I.O. dot right that way? The other way we could do it, which is a little bit, also a little bit wonky, is we could just do that. We could just say we have a space plus whatever this this uh, this outputs and another space which is a little bit silly let's make another function for that so we'll just call it pad And that's all it needs to do. So we can get rid of this this weirdness here and just put one more one more step in our uh, in our pipeline for pad. Oh. File that, print our board. Um, enum dot each argument error. Oh yeah, it's gotta go before the puts. Well, that's a little bit weird. What's going on there? So we got one, two, three, four. Let's let's actually change that back to X's. Well, that looks fine, actually. We just, since we padded everything, we didn't have enough. Yeah, we didn't have enough uh, horizontal lines. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, like the two padding.
That one looks good. Okay, I think our board print is done. So we have board. I think that's, let's see, I'm gonna have to explain modules and enum.chunkby, enum.each. Those are all great things to do though. Square. Okay, last thing I'm gonna get add for this video is just a game. So this will be the same uh, same general thing. Uh, we'll make game.ex and game <clears throat> game is going to be uh, another struct and it'll keep track of basically all the uh, the game state stuff. So let me just take a look at my notes for what I want to um, write. So this one's not this one's not going to be the continuation passing like the the one I have on Alchemist Camp now. This tic tac toe game is going to be super simple. So all it's going to have is whose turn is next, and if uh, and there's no state machine. So basically, if there is no next player, that means the game hasn't started yet or the game has ended. So we basically just need uh, whose turn is next. We need the board and we need the winner. And again, like if the winner is nil, that means the game is still going. If there is a winner, uh, that means it's over. And if it's a tie, the winner will actually be the value tie. So we'll alias just so we can uh, get at the struct for the, the game itself. Also get tic tac board, and this struct will have the board. Next, uh, next player, I guess, and winner. And to make a new game. All we all we do is return a game struct. The game has a board, which is board.new, and next player will be nil, winner will be nil. And we'll probably add to this, and the game is going to uh, have this struct, and then we'll have the main game loop in here. Uh, probably not even break out the IO, probably just leave the IO in there as well. Uh, alias, which we'll just do my game equals tic tac dot game dot new. Boom, better board, no next player. No winner yet. Maybe we'll uh, figure out the next player randomly, something like that. All right, I think that's good enough for here. This has already been a longer stream than I thought. It took a whole hour. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna put this up on Alchemist Camp pretty soon uh, on the little potions, and I think I think this game is actually simple enough because I've. I mean, I've already got most of it here. Like, printing the board is the main complexity so far. Um, yeah, I think I think this is small enough. Might even be able to do, like, two games in the uh, in the board games chapter. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But it'd be pretty fun to, you know, put in, like, a second one, like Pente or something, and have it uh, reuse a lot of the same things in Tic-Tac-Toe. Um, yeah, so thanks for listening, everybody, and 
I will see you next time.